Hello again. Now the main stories in London. One of the candidates to be London's next mayor has today welcomed a move to refer the Prime Minister to the police watchdog following accusations of misconduct when he was the mayor of London. It's claimed his friend and businesswoman Jennifer Alcuri received favourable treatment when he was in the position between 2008 and 2016. Well, our political correspondent Simon Harris is in Manchester where Mr Johnson is due to arrive this evening for the Tory party conference. He sent us this report a short while ago. Boris Johnson arrives in Manchester facing trouble on several fronts, but it's his time at City Hall which has come back to haunt him. The former mayor is facing two investigations into his friendship with the American businesswoman Jennifer R. Curie, who travelled on overseas trade missions organised by City Hall. The London Assembly has launched an inquiry into whether he failed to disclose a conflict of interest. And now a senior official at City Hall has referred the case to the police complaints body, which could lead to an investigation into whether Mr Johnson was guilty of misconduct in public office. Downing Street has dismissed the move as politically motivated. But the former mayor's opponents say it's right to ask questions. The monitoring officer is very clear that there are signs here of misconduct in, in public office, of misspending, of public money, of interference uh, politically from the mayor in who gets to go on uh, trade missions when the people in charge of those trade missions have said initially that there was no case for, for the person to go on the, on the missions. So it seems there is misconduct here in its, in its most obvious sense, certainly enough to warrant a, an investigation. The Prime Minister has insisted the proper rules were followed, but so far he's declined to answer questions about his relationship with Miss R. Curie. This week, Boris Johnson will be where he likes to be, in the spotlight. But with more revelations likely in tomorrow's papers, it might not be that comfortable. Simon Harris reporting from the Tory party conference in Manchester. Good evening, I'm Duncan Golastani. Prime Minister Boris Johnson faced further questions today over his relationship with an American businesswoman while he was Mayor of London. On Friday, he was referred to the police complaints body to assess whether he should face a criminal investigation over his links with former model Jennifer Arcuri. Today, he insisted everything he did was within the rules that governed his role at the time. Our political correspondent Simon Harris is at the Conservative Party conference in Manchester. The Prime Minister wanted to talk about hospitals today. The government announced plans for new hospitals at Whips Cross in north-east London, at St Helier in Sutton and in Watford and Harlow. But once again, on this, the first day of the Tory party conference, he was dogged by questions from his past when he was Mayor of London. He's been accused of failing to disclose his friendship with the American businesswoman Jennifer Arcuri. She was invited on three overseas trade missions organised by City Hall. And the Mayor's promotional and marketing agency, London & Partners, also sponsored her at business events in London to the tune of £16,000. But the Prime Minister insists no rules were broken. Everything was done with full propriety. So you did declare the interest and you'll be able to say that when you're called no, to various hearings? No, I said hearings. that everything was done in accordance I with full propriety. I'll ask you a very specific propriety. question. Well, you have to declare an interest. Did you declare there was it? No, there was no interest to declare. On ITV News London tomorrow, I'll be talking to the Prime Minister about the looming general election, whether the government will give the go-ahead to Crossrail 2 and what lay behind his extraordinary remarks to a new dad in a London hospital corridor. Simon Harris at the Conservative Party conference in Manchester there. Next tonight, let's take you back a fortnight or so ago when the Prime Minister was confronted by an angry father at Whips Cross Hospital over NHS cuts. At the time, Boris Johnson had this to say about the media being there. The NHS has been destroyed. It's been destroyed. It's been destroyed. And now you come here for a press opportunity. Well, actually, there's no press here. What do you mean there's no press here? Who are these people? Well, today Mr Johnson explained to our political correspondent Simon Harris what he had really meant to say. Simon is in Manchester at the Conservative Party conference for us now. Uh, so, Simon, what else did the PM have to say on this? Well, Duncan, it seems the Prime Minister was confused. Well, at least that's how he explained it to me. But I also wanted to talk to him about his Brexit strategy. In the EU referendum, London backed Remain by a big margin. And many London Conservatives fear their party will take a pasting in the general election, whenever that is. But Boris Johnson disagrees. 
I think that actually what the country wants and Londoners want is to move on as fast as we Most can. Most Londoners want and to stay in the EU. Well, actually, the, the stuff I've seen indicates to me that whether you're a Remainer or a Lever, probably, overwhelmingly, you want to to get it done and move on. And that's what we're going to do by October the 31st. And I think that the, there are lots of reasons for doing that. First of all, you know, it's the democratic will of the people. They voted three and a half years ago to, to come out. Parliament just feels sort of paralysed at the moment. And we need to get on in delivering the priorities of the British people. And so when it comes to uh, to London, launching a big, the biggest ever programme of hospital infrastructure for a generation, it's, it's in, electioneering, isn't it? No, well, it's, electioneering. It's, it's in areas where we think the hospitals need funding. In London, you've got Epsom and St Helier and uh, Whips Cross, uh, both going to be uh, rebuilt. Spades in the ground projects. Talking of Whips Cross, and those will be a fantastic. You visited benefit. Whips Cross. Why did you tell Omar Salam that there were no press present when they Look, were clearly at the end of the corridor? The, there is, of course, when you're doing a, my job as. As, as Prime Minister, you're going to get um, uh, public interaction, public uh, uh, worried members of the public. Particularly, this gentleman, I think, had uh, his daughter been in overnight, and he was very, he was very agitated. And I, and I understand it completely. And uh, I'd been told it was a no press visit, and, and that couldn't you see the cameras? But the, yeah, I'm sorry, but there was, I, I, I got confused about the press. I was told there was a no, in the sense I wasn't going to be talking to the press, and, and that was the reason for uh, the confusion. So it's the biggest program of in hospital infrastructure investment for, for 40 years. We'll be doing more on uh, GP surgeries. Uh, we're doing more, for instance, on uh, new technologies, a £200 million fund. Will we're you commit to Crossrail too in new technologies. And you invite me to uh, speak. I think it's disgraceful that the current mayor of London, who obviously wasn't a patch on the old guy, uh, has decided to let this thing go hang. Will you as a government back Crossrail well, too? But, but what he needs to do, and what uh, TfL under him, I believe he chairs TfL, uh, what they need to, to do is to produce the business case and to show how they're going to fund it. And if you remember with, with Crossrail, the whole city came together and business and the boroughs and all the stakeholders came together to make the case to government for funding uh, Crossrail. We've seen no evidence from uh, the mayor that he's showing any leadership whatever in bringing, for, bringing London together to deliver Crossrail to. Where's the programme for getting business to help to, to pay for this scheme? You know, Crossrail 2 could be fantastic, but it needs, I'm afraid, leadership from City Hall, and he needs to stop spending money on press officers and put some money into policing and transport. Simon, let's pick up with uh, Crossrail 2 then. What's the response been from City Hall? Well, City Hall is absolutely furious, <laughs> calling Mr Johnson's remarks pathetic. The mayor's spokesman said once again Boris Johnson has got it totally wrong and if he read his briefing notes he would realise that Transport for London is working closely with the government to make Crossrail 2 happen as quickly as possible. Frankly, there's no love lost between the current mayor and his predecessor. Tomorrow here in Manchester we get to hear from the Conservative who wants to be London's next mayor. Violent crime in the capital and what's being done about it will be a central issue in next year's mayoral election campaign. Today, Sean Bailey, the Tory who will take on Sadiq Khan, spoke at the party's conference in Manchester. He said every victim of crime is a Londoner failed by the current mayor. From the conference, here's our political correspondent, Simon Harris. Sean Bailey jogged onto the stage as if to signal he's running for mayor. This was a chance to give his campaign message a test drive in front of a live audience. Since I last appeared in, on this stage in front of you, there has been over 100 murders in London. There's been 4,000 people stabbed, 20,000 people sexually assaulted, and over 70,000 burglaries. And let's be clear, these are real people, real families being torn apart. Every victim is a Londoner that has been failed by the current mayor. He didn't hold back in his onslaught on Sadiq Khan. Instead of backing the police, he's busy building Bran Khan, throwing beach parties, sponsoring bicycle ballet, plastering his picture all over London in a bid to become the leader of the Labour Party. 
not surprisingly, it was what they wanted to hear. Yeah, I think it's a really clear message for a safer London. London knows what's good for it. They vote for Sean. We've got a mayor in place who is failing our youths, failing their mothers, failing their fathers. Sean understands. But the real test will be when the candidates go head to head in the campaign proper in 2020. Stand up, be counted and help me make London a safer place. Thank you. An opinion poll earlier this year gave Sadiq Khan a commanding lead over his rivals. Sean Bailey thinks he can close the gap. But London's murder rate will only be one factor in the mayoral contest. Brexit could also play a significant role in Mr Bailey's chances of capturing City Hall. Isn't being a candidate for a party that backs leave in a Remain city a handicap? Not really, because I'm me, I'm Sean, I'm a born and bred Londoner whose sole ambition is to lift up the millions of disenfranchised Londoners, the Londoners who can't travel down, the Londoners who are going to be suffering from the policies that Sadiq has put in. Sean Bailey believes he has a message which will resonate with voters, but the political landscape has changed beyond recognition since Londoners last elected a Conservative mayor. So, Simon, what do you think of Sean Bailey's chances in the mayoral contest? Duncan, it's often said that London is a Labour city and while the Lib Dems did better than Labour in the European elections in May, while the Conservatives didn't win any seats at all, most observers expect the mayoral contest to come down to a straight fight between Sadiq Khan and Sean Bailey. And that's because of what's often referred to as the donut, large concentration of Labour voting areas in inner London and an outer ring of suburbs which traditionally vote Conservative. That makes it very hard for any third party to break through in a London-wide election. What we got today was a foretaste of Mr Bailey's main thrust of attack against Mr Khan. What we don't know is how Brexit will impact on the mayoral elections. Simon, thank you. Well, hundreds of miles away from the capital, how to tackle violent crime was a focus for the Prime Minister at the Tory party conference in Manchester. Boris Johnson committed to increasing controversial stop and search. He says it's the kindest thing to do to bring knife crime down. Well, from there, here's our political correspondent, Simon Harris. Even as London Mayor, his conference speech always attracted a big crowd. For Boris Johnson's first appearance as PM, they started queuing at half seven in the morning. Dr Hayda Jabba, a GP from Islington who voted Remain, wanted to hear a clear message on Brexit. I come from Iraq, where we did not have democracy, we were ruled by a dictator, so I value democracy. And I feel that, you know, when people voted on the ballot paper, they should be respected. I lost the, the referendum, but now I am for, all for leave, because that's democracy. After days of questions about his private life and personal behaviour, the faithful were determined not to miss out. Two hours to go, and still people are joining the back of the queue. They face a long wait. Inside the conference hall, the Tories chanted their version of Oh, Jeremy Corbyn. The delegates knew they were in for a laugh. Johnson jokes are a given, even on serious stuff like the Brexit logjam in Parliament. If Parliament were a reality TV show, then the whole lot of us, I'm afraid, would have been voted out of the jungle by now. But at least we'd have had the consolation of watching the speaker being forced to eat a kangaroo testicle. And... <laughs> On knife crime, the Prime Minister backed greater stop and search powers for the police. But believe me, when a young man, and I'm afraid it's almost invariably a, a young man, is going equipped with a bladed weapon, there is nothing kinder or more loving or more life-saving you can do than to ask him to turn out his pockets and produce that weapon. Stop and search is controversial, but these two delegates from London had no qualms. I love it. Yeah, because people are dying. People, children are dying. The people that are objecting to it, will it ever happen to their children? No. It's a good idea. The more they stop them, the earlier they stop them, the better it be for my grandchildren on the street. Thank you very much. Boris Johnson's promise to leave the EU in 29 days was what they wanted to hear. But there are Tory MPs in Remain voting parts of London wondering if it'll cost them their seats. Simon Harris, ITV News, Manchester.